Hello. Welcome to our garden. So, I was thinking, two weeks until I next put the video out, just finished doing the video that I uploaded for me right now yesterday, but it depends when I get this one out um, for you guys. I was having a little flick through my box and I suddenly thought, oh no, I haven't done my melons, I haven't done my aubergines, I need to get them in now. And then I thought, I haven't done my purple sprout and broccoli either. So, I'm going to do another quick planting session, I think. I've got a lot of seedlings to get in. There's joys of this time of year. So spring for me starts March 20th, I think it is. And we're now on 18th of February, so I've got a month until the start of uh, spring. But there's quite a few bits and pieces that I'm going to kind of need to get ready now. I can sit in my office where it's got heating 24-7, grow lights, so I'll be fine in there for now. But I do need to get on with them. So, here's the plan. I mentioned in a previous video about the aubergines I'm doing. I'm doing, let's see if I can get them. I've only got a couple left of the pinstripes, which are these ones. I'm going to do these, and then good old Black Beauty as well. I'll get these guys in today. The melons, I'm going for a bit more variety this year. So we have only one seed left of the, what are they called? Mangum. These guys, they're delicious. I had a good success with them. Only got one at the moment, but next time I go down the green uh, garden. Hmm. Camera just decided it didn't want to work anymore. Fair enough. But yeah, so, let's say, only got one of these. Plant it. Uh, I'll pick up some more. We go for some musk melons, some cantaloupes. Had good success with them as well. Kids really enjoy them. So last year, I only got one watermelon, and it was the size of a cricket ball for us in the UK. For everyone else, baseball. It was, wasn't very big. It was really tasty, but it wasn't very big. So we do that this year, and then my tried and tested mulbers as well. Going to plant some of them. My plan for the greenhouse this year is with the exception of one or maybe two of the beef tomato plants, it's just going to be melons and cucumbers in here. That's my plan. But a load more of this up this year so I can support them a bit better because I did notice last year, especially with the cucumbers, I let them spiral off too much into different ways and I ended up with a lot of growth hanging off of my worktops and not a lot of growth up here. Now, the solar panels do cause a bit of an issue now. Um, I certainly noticed that last year when I put them up. Um, this corner, which is usually my best growth rate because it's got the most sun, it, it wasn't that good. So I've got to get these solar panels sorted before we get to the end of spring. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to move the camera about, bring you back down to where I'm doing my seeding in the seed tray, in the whatever it's, whatever it's called. Um, Yes, yeah, so I'll bring it back down there. I'll speak to you in a moment. Right, so let's make a start. Now these seeds are much bigger, much more sizable. So I'm not too fussed if there's any little bits like this in here. It's not gonna cause me any issues at all. Now one thing I'm gonna have to make sure I do properly here is label it. So much bigger pots. Brassicas, for example, which actually, I'll tell you what, let's jump back to when I did the brassicas and then I'll bring you back to this. So let's talk purple sprout and broccoli. I've grown a few different varieties of calabrese, your cabbages, standard broccoli, cauliflower, even, um, oh, what's it called? There's one that looks like a dragon's egg. Um, Romany, is Romany cauliflower? Something like that. But they're really, really cool. We grew them. But the one thing I haven't grown is purple sprout and broccoli. I don't know why I've never grown it, because it is delicious. Um, so, I was in the garden centre, and because I've not grown them before, I saw a variety pack. Four varieties of purple sprout and broccoli, thought I'd give them a go. So you've got Rudolph, early purple sprouting, claret, and summer purple. Give it a go, why not? So today I'm gonna to start up in some of my seed trays for the heated propagator. Um, when we're doing the early purple sprouting and summer purple. Thought I'd give that a go. 
So I'll bring you in and I'll show you what I'm doing. So, trays for my propagator. The lids are actually in my office where the propagator itself is, but that's fine. So, I have a mixture of compost, perlite and vermiculite, which is good for the seeds. I'm simply going to chuck a load in the tray. Maybe not quite that much. Give it a gentle tap down. Same again in this one. Now, most of the Calabrese family are very much the same when it comes to how you seed them up. They're not a very big seed. If they're not a very big seed, they don't need to go very deep. So, try and make it semi-level. Then, take my seed packet. Which one's this? This one's early sprouting. I'm going to show you what they look like, shall we? They're similar to the size of a radish seed. Very teeny tiny little things. What I'm going to do is I am simply just going to sprinkle on the surface. About a quarter of the packet. Maybe slightly more than that. So it's just a little bit of a a sprinkling of them all over that. That's fine. Fold it over twice because I keep getting my seed packets wet. If you watched the video last week, you'll know that I soaked all of my flowers. And then we have the summer purple. So the summer purple apparently you plant from January to February. The early you plant from February to April. We're in February at the minute, so both both absolutely fine. You get less seeds in this one, so I'd assume this is a bigger plant. <coughs> oh, dearie me. And again, just giving it a sprinkle over the soil. Way too many plants. Perfect. And then the next thing I'm going to do just very carefully, I don't want any big bits. So you see how like this big old chunk of compost, I don't want any big bits. So I'm just going to work my fingers into this little bit here, make sure everything's broken up as small as it can be. And then rubbing it between my hands, thin layer, nice soft top. And then just gently patting it down so I know that it's all there and it's not going anywhere. Now this compost is already nice and moist, so I shouldn't actually need to water these today. I may give them a little drop, a little spray, but that'll be about it. And then pat it down. And now the most important bit, I keep bloody forgetting. Label. So this one here was the early purple. Don't need to put the date in but i find it quite interesting to see how these things grow especially something like this that i've not grown before and then this was summer wasn't it yeah summer purple Ooh. ping it across there you go and what these We'll do now is they are going to go into my thingy propagator. Now there are two other varieties. There's the Rudolph and the Claret. So when are they supposed to go in? So Rudolph is March to May and March to June for the Claret. Harvest time for them. Oh, well, I definitely get the Rudolph in because that's harvest time is November to February. nice so the purple sprouting i don't expect to harvest that until next year the summer that does say that it would be this year we'll have to see won't we we'll have to see but yeah 
I'll go get them into the propagate. Yeah, so as you saw with the brassicas, they're much smaller seed. Um, I think in the video I did last, I was also showing some of the other seeds that I was putting in, much, much smaller. So you're not too worried about depth and things like that. With these guys, they're obviously a lot deeper. Do, 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 do. Let's go for the Mulbers, shall we? Yeah, plenty of seeds for these. So, the Mulber seeds. You do want a little bit of depth. Doesn't need to be too much. What's that? Coconut husk. Pinch some pots from my wife's greenhouse because mine are running very low now. So chuck them seed in each. Actually, these are quite old. I might put two seeds in each actually. And then I'll just pinch one out. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll two seeds in each of these. Put them slightly off to the side so if I do get a second one come through um, the root network shouldn't be entwined so when you're using older seeds the germination rate can change dramatically. Um, there are different ways of testing it what you can do is uh, a bit of kitchen roll pop some seeds in that Cover it with another bit of kitchen roll and then moisten it, leave it for a few days somewhere warm and you'll find that your seeds will start to germinate if they're going to in that scenario and that way it's easier to visually see what's going on with them. Um, or I'm not too worried because this will be the last season I can use these anyway so I'll just put an extra one in each of these and see how that goes. Right, so they're the Mulbers, pop them in the Joyful trays I picked up from the school. Next, let's do some. What are we going to do? Do to do to do to do, do, do. Let's do the mangom. Again, larger seed, larger pot, and a bit deeper. Yeah, I only got one single seed in here. So I'm only going to do one, I'm not even going to use a dibber for that, I'm just going to chuck it in. I'm going at the end of the sound there, just put that packet there so I know which one it is, so I don't get confused. I'm blatantly going to get confused. Cantaloupe. Again, this is a last season's packet. Plenty of seeds in there, so I think I'll go for four of these again. Uh, let's make the colours match, shall we? Brown pots for these ones. It's all about you in the comments. What melons are you planting this year, if any? What have you had the most success with? I always tend to try and string them up in the greenhouse in the UK. I believe we're where I am, zone three. Um, so we do get some hot, but we don't get that much. So greenhouse tends to be the easiest way to do them because I can control the climate. It's not a heated greenhouse I've got, although I can put a heater in here. I've got power to it. Um, depending on how much of my office space I end up using this year, I may end up putting some heat in here just to save me some workspace in there. Get some seeds in here. Do, do, do. Cantaloupes, probably a wee bit deep for them, but that's fine. I that won't struggle too much. Now you can soak the seeds. That's never an issue with these sorts of things. Um, I'm not in too much urgency for them to come up, so I'm, I'm not going to bother. Um, but it is certainly something that you can do if you wish. There are the cantaloupes. And last but not least, where to put my pots? Oh, they're falling on the blue floor. So I'll grow three of the watermelon because I don't have much space and because I only have three of the blue pots. So yeah, that'll work out just fine. And it's the same mix I've used for most of my seedlings. 
It's around about 50% compost, 30% perlite, 20% vermiculite. Because the melons are actually going to be in these pots for a little bit longer, probably going to be in these pots for say a month or so, four to six weeks roughly, they need to be in a larger pot and the perlite will help keep the soil nice for them. So watermelons or mini love watermelons, they are an F1 variety so they should do okay. And this is a fresh packet. Oh, that's probably a bit deep there again, James. One, two, three. There we go, that's the melons all done. One, two, three. Brilliant. So, melons sorted. What was the other thing I wanted to plant? Oh yes, aubergines. Well, I tell you what, have you ever seen a cucamelon? I grew them a couple of years ago and I kept the seeds. Yeah, they're quite a pretty little thing and they're tasty. Let's do a few little cucamelons. Cucamelons are midget. Um, is that a safe word? You're allowed to say midget? They're a tiny little um, melon, which they're not really a melon, to be totally honest. But they are quite a sweet little thing. Um, the way we've used them in our household is we chuck them in the freezer and we use them as ice cubes in gin. And they're absolutely bloody marvellous. We'll set a few of these, actually. Success rate's not going to be the best on them. So, a handful of their seeds. Tiny, tiny little things. Um, but yeah, the way the vine grows is quite ornate. Um, you end up with quite a lot of... I don't know what the terms are. I'm having a bit of a brain fart moment today. Um, you end up with long vines, tiny little ornate leaves. They're quite sweet little things. The fruit itself, it's somewhere between cucumber and lime, but they look like little tiny melons. I don't know whether the success rate of this is going to be very good, so there's three seeds in each of them. I seem to be having one of those days where I am just bouncing from thing to thing. A little sense of urgency. The weather's now changing so I'm hoping in a short while I'm going to get down to the allotment with some rope, some pegs and a shovel so I can get everything all turned over and ready. Because um, we've got a lot to plant at the moment down there. Yep, so that's them done, dusted. Cucumelon sorted. And I'm going to need another tray aren't I for the aubergines? Yep, hold up. That's fine. And then, yeah, last but not least, the aubergines. Let's get them all seeded up. And then I might show you how I've done everything in my office in a moment. And I think we've managed to use most of this compost, which isn't bad at all, is it? So we have our pinstripe aubergines. Pretty sure I've got a couple of seeds left, haven't I? No, I've got more than one in there. Yeah, I've got a few in there, that's fine. Let's pop these in, they don't need to be very deep. We see the seeds for these guys, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but they are very, very small. Again, I'm doing like I did a minute ago, putting two in each of these pots, separating them slightly, and I'll just simply pick.
pick out the weaker of the two. And then the Black Beauty, I always have success with these, so there's not much of an issue there, is there? And then the next thing we'll have to think about getting on with is the Courgettes. I don't think I'll worry about them today, though. Yeah, Black Beauty Seeds, absolutely tidy again. I'll do more of these because you can expect better yields. I'm still not really fully worked out what spacings and positions I'm using my allotment with yet. So I may end up actually keeping all of these seedlings. It all depends on what I think once I really get down there and start getting on with it, I suppose. And then I'm just topping it off with a bit more, a bit more soil. Brilliant, right. I'm going to write out a load of labels and I'll see you in a second. So I think... My greenhouse is starting to fill up with things. Starting to. You know, I can still tidy all of this up and I've got lots more space for more things. So, maybe we should do some kale. Back with you in a sec. No. Gotta stop. One of the things which, as a gardener, you've really got to remember, and, and I'm really rubbish at doing, is remembering stop planting. So the kale, I need to plant next month. I can plant it direct, so it's straight in the ground, or I can bring it up as seedlings and then transplant it over, which is what I will personally be doing. I don't know my allotment plot very well. I don't know the ground very well. So all I can do is judge it on at home. And at home, we have an issue with cats digging everything up. And I like to be able to plant seedlings with a stake beside it so the cats don't dig it up. So I'm gonna hold off doing that. I'll also be doing things like kohlrabi, um did it with not very much success a few years ago want to try it again because it seems like an interesting thing to be able to put into um stir fries and things like that um and a plethora of other things now, i've had a little look at my office i don't know where i'm putting these seedlings thus i'm not doing any more brassicas right now um but yeah so another little variety of things that i'm sowing mid-february for 2024 We'll see how much success we have this year. Um, we're keeping a bit of a running total of where we're at so far cost-wise. Last year, we, we ran deficit, unfortunately. It cost me, I think it was around about £170, um, comparative to how much I'd saved on the food that I'd grown and things like that. This year, I've got a lot more space. I will be doing things like carrots. I will be direct sowing them. Um, we do need to set up the pea gutter. I always have my gutter of peas in here that I can then start picking out mid-March. Um, I'll do that in the next video. I won't do that today. Um, I've got a lot of things I need to get done today. And as I say, get down the allotment, turn over the last couple of bits, string everything up so I know where we are for all the beds. And then I can get things like my artichokes, my garlic, my onions, my spuds, and get everything in and get it fleeced. But yeah, so that's all for today. Thank you ever so much for joining us as ever. I hope you have a fantastic day. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.